Hello everyone. Today in our series of Talk Texas Cable interviews, we have with us Dr. Sudeep Gupta. Dr. Gupta is an eminent medical oncologist and is currently working as a professor at Tata Memorial Center, Mumbai. Dr. Gupta is a renowned researcher with special interest in breast cancer and gynecological malignancies. In breast cancer, Dr. Gupta's areas of research include adjunct therapy and management approach of metastasis from breast cancer. His other areas of research are cervical cancer and ovarian cancer. In this interview, Dr. Gupta will talk about the important features of National Cancer Control Program in India. Thank you, Dr. Gupta, for this interview. Thank you very much to Doc Plexus for the opportunity to be in this interview. Since we know that you are the organizing secretary of the Platinum Jubilee Conference by the Atom Memorial Center, so what are the unique features of your talk in the National Cancer about the National Cancer Control Program in India and the National Cancer Board? So uh, let me just begin by giving a very brief introduction to what our conference is. Tata Memorial Center is in the 75th year of its inception and to celebrate the 75th year we have planned a series of three conferences. The first of which was organized in February 2016 and dealt with uh, challenging dogmas. But this conference is, uh, as you know, the title of the conference is Healthcare, is it a commodity or a basic human need? So what we have done is to collect healthcare economists, uh, policy makers, administrators, doctors, oncologists, other specialists, NGOs, industrialists, pharma sector in on one platform and they will deliberate on ways and means to make healthcare universally accessible in India and also in other countries. So in this context, uh, we have invited about uh, individuals from about seven countries who will tell us about the healthcare models in their countries and what are the efficiencies of those models and how those can be improved. So uh, we have called um, uh, people from Cuba, from Brazil, from Iran, from Thailand, from Japan, uh, from UK and from US who will present the healthcare models as they exist in those countries and to make the make the whole uh, presentation complete I will be presenting on the Indian National Cancer Control Program. As you know this is a national program that is uh, run by the government of India and under which there are various uh, there are various stakeholders there are various uh, points of action at both the primary, secondary and tertiary care levels. So what I will do is the uh, is to outline uh, the history, a little bit of the history of the Indian National Cancer Control Program and also what it has delivered thus far and what are the promises that remain to be fulfilled. So what will happen is that when you have presentations from all these countries including India, then people can get a holistic picture of what are the kinds of healthcare models that are available and that have the that are in vogue and what are the best features of each model and how can each model improve uh, upon its existing state definitely sounds like a very interesting conference so you have talked about different models and people are going to talk about the healthcare models of different countries so how do you measure the efficiency of each healthcare model or in particular in healthcare delivery system i think that's an excellent question and uh, uh, all of us know that uh, a lot of uh, money is spent in providing healthcare to the population. So, for example, in a country like America, they spend close to about 15 or 18 percent of their gross domestic product on health. In India, unfortunately, that fraction is much lower. But nevertheless, whatever is spent, we must know how efficiently it is being spent and how is it that uh, it is making an impact on the health of the population. So we have a special section in the conference that is dedicated to measuring the efficiencies of uh, of uh, of healthcare delivery in healthcare delivery, and uh, some of the ways, for example, to measure the efficiencies in healthcare delivery are by gauging various indices. 
So, for example, you know, one could uh, track the maternal mortality rate over time, one can track the infant mortality rate over time, one can track in the domain of cancer the uh, the incidence of cancer, the mortality from cancer and also the survival from cancer over time. Now, all of this as you can understand needs a lot of data collection. It needs a mechanism by which this data can be collected and then interpreted. So, the conference will have world renowned individuals with a lot of depth and expertise in this field to suggest ways and means on how healthcare delivery can be can be measured in terms of its efficiencies. Your research also focuses on adjunct therapies for breast cancer. So, can you please highlight on some of the recent advancements in this field? So, coming back to breast cancer, which is my core area of expertise, um, you know, breast cancer is one of the success stories of modern oncology. And um, today, uh, one can say that in patients who are diagnosed in stage 1 or 2 breast cancer, the chances of long-term survival are close to about or more than 80 or 85 percent. Um, so, what has happened is that there have been a lot of advancements uh, with respect to chemotherapy, with respect to targeted therapy, with respect to endocrine therapy and there have also of course been advancements in surgery as well as radiation. But if we were to talk about adjunct therapy, chemotherapy has become very efficient. We know how, uh, how best to deliver chemotherapy without causing too much of toxicity. Uh, we have a special subtype of breast cancer called the HER2 positive breast cancer wherein, you know, if we use a targeted antibody called trastuzumab, that has been shown to improve the chances of cure by about 10%. And then, of course, for the estrogen receptor positive breast cancer, we have the routine use of endocrine therapy and the classic drug therein is tamoxifen. But in the recent past, we also have a number of other drugs, most prominently the group of drugs called aromatase inhibitors. And uh, in the metastatic situation also, I would say not adjunctive in the primary disease, but even for metastatic cancer, even after having been diagnosed uh, with cancer that has spread to other organs, the survival of breast cancer patients has improved markedly and many of them can expect to live for many years on a variety of treatments. So, on the whole, I would say that breast cancer has been uh, has been a success story of modern oncology. So, having talked about the advancements in breast cancer and different models of healthcare, how do you suggest or uh, what are the ways in which we can make the cancer care more affordable for people? I think you are absolutely spot on and that is the not the million but the trillion dollar question as to how to make healthcare affordable. And again, you know, I will come back to our conference. The whole motivation for the conference is the fact that howsoever good a treatment is, it is useless if it cannot be delivered to a large fraction of patients who need it. So, for example, you can have a wonder drug or a wonder treatment that will cure 90% of patients. But if only 1% of the eligible patients are able to receive that drug, then it is no good. So, again another uh, another section or a, a session in our conference deals with the theme of the economics of innovation. And there, you know, what we have done is we have requested or we have invited individuals from multinational pharma, from the Indian pharmaceutical sector on uh, to deliberate on the ways and means to make not only drugs but also devices affordable. And just to give you one example, one of the ways in which uh, which healthcare and some of the drugs can become affordable is by the development of what we call biosimilars or generics. And you know that some of the Indian companies have been at the forefront of of uh, of developing both generic drugs as well as biosimilar drugs. And one must say that the development of these drugs and the technology that goes with it. Uh, contribute significantly to making healthcare affordable for a large fraction of patients with cancer. And I'm just saying cancer because I deal with cancer and I'm a specialist in cancer. But the same principles more or less would also apply to every domain of, uh, of, uh, of healthcare. Definitely, we agree to that and we 
look forward to hearing those sessions in the conference. Uh, let's come back to the breast cancer. The recent uh, advances, uh, recent findings report an increase in bone metastasis for breast cancer. So, uh, would you brief us on the current therapeutic approaches to manage such patients? I think you're absolutely right, Dr. Kalra, that uh, that uh, bone metastasis is a very important uh, area or a region to which uh, or an organ to which breast cancer can spread. Um, in the past 10 years or so, there have been significant advancements in the management of these patients. So there are a group of drugs that we call the bone modifying agents. And those bone modifying agents essentially help to reduce the morbidity as well as the mortality in patients who have developed bone metastasis. And so, for example, they reduce the pain of metastasis. They also prevent fractures. And one group of drugs is called bisphosphonates, the prototype of which is zoledronic acid. And now there is a new group of drugs, uh, which is an antibody called denosumab, which inhibits the rank ligand. So both of these drugs have been proven to be very useful in uh, in patients with bone metastasis. There are a number of other treatments also that are possible. So for example, we commonly use palliative radiation. So for example, if I have a patient who has developed a painful metastasis to the neck of the right femur, then a targeted radiation to that region not only improves the pain but also prevents the bone from fracturing. We also have a number of uh, radioisotope treatments. So, for example, there is a radioisotope treatment called samarium therapy that can also be given and it is highly effective in palliating uh, the pain of uh, uh, in patients with bone metastasis. So, you are right, bone is a very important organ to which many cancers, not only breast, can metastasize and but there are a number of modalities that are available to be able to treat these patients. Dr. Kutta, you previously mentioned about data management. So, will clinically relevant data of Indian population help in prevention and management of breast cancer patients? I think uh, that will absolutely be the case. As you say, um, <clears throat> India has to progress from a situation where most of the analysis is performed on data that is obtained in Western countries and applied here. And that extrapolation may not be very uh, may not be very accurate so we definitely have to collect our own data uh, major academic centers in this country are engaged in a meaningful clinical and translational research to precisely generate and analyze that data and uh, we ourselves have had the occasion to publish a few studies in major journals that have contributed to the understanding of breast cancer and its management worldwide to give you just one example, uh, we recently published a study in the Lancet Oncology wherein we studied the role of performing surgery for the primary tumor in women who already had metastatic breast cancer. And we showed in a very nicely conducted randomized controlled trial for the very first time in the world that performing surgery for the primary tumor may not be a very useful strategy in all patients except for those who need it for palliation. And this was a long-standing question that had never been answered. And after our study, there is at least some clarity on how to manage these patients. So I completely agree with you that Indian data needs to be generated and generated in well-designed studies that will be able to answer very relevant questions. So Dr. Gupta, lastly, uh, thank you for partnering with Dr. Plexus uh, for this conference. So any other when our members can benefit from this conference and what is your take on this partnership with DocPlexus? I think uh, DocPlexus is a major community. It's a, I would call it a community of individuals who interact with each other. And I'm very happy that uh, DocPlexus has uh, agreed to cover our conference. And of course, one of the ways in which uh, the members can benefit is to attend the conference. But another way to do it is also to listen to the coverage that you will be undertaking at the time of the conference. So we hope that we, we have world-renowned faculty led by Professor Amartya Sen who will be delivering the conference oration. And the oration is very aptly titled uh, Healthcare for All, Why and How? 
and uh, so uh, I'm sure that Docplexus will be able to cover uh, many aspects of the theme of our conference and uh, I'm sure that your members will enjoy uh, the deliberations of the conference as well as your coverage of it. So thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to interact with you. Thank you so much, sir. And I'm sure our members will benefit greatly from it. Thank you. Thank you. To stay updated on our latest scale videos and interviews, please follow us on Twitter, like us on our Facebook page and subscribe on our YouTube channel. Happy Dogplexing!